Hey guys, um, I wanted to talk about something really obvious that uh, is profound and I guess is still rare and um, nevertheless is obvious, which is that toxic masculinity is a thing that most people don't really seem to realize that people are still making fun of guys wearing burks or having man buns in Boulder, which isn't even really a thing, at least the man bun part. Just saw this Whole Foods daddy on Instagram posted this thing about this lady was looking, uh, was frustrated with dating opportunities in Boulder. And one of the comments was telling her to go north or east to like where tough guys are who drink coffee and wear boots instead of like drinking lattes and wearing Burks. And um, it's sort of funny to see a comment like that, but it's also sort of not funny. It's sort of sad to realize that this is still a thing. Um, you know, gender is a complicated subject, but it's also really simple. It's, you know, we're all, we all fall somewhere on the spectrum and we don't have to identify with this BS where we have to like pretend to love football and punch each other to be manly. Um, I have a habit of sharing whatever I'm going through, whether it's good, it's a victory, it's a loss, it's sad. That's just how I was brought up in the Buddhist tradition. Vulnerability is considered to be totally fine and healthy and normal uh, to share. So I found it shocking, and this is what kind of inspired this. I hope it's helpful to someone. At the very least, it'll be helpful to myself just to go through it. I found it kind of shocking when one of my Buddhist buddies last night, who I hadn't heard from for like 10 years, but I genuinely considered him a friend, left a laugh emoji um, and then wrote a series of like just full on insulting comments, kind of making fun of me and telling me to shut up about sharing vulnerable stuff. And, you know, I mean, sure, you can share vulnerable stuff in, in an emotionalistic way. I call it emotionalism, where you're getting off on yourself and you're doing it for internet likes. But you can also share this stuff to model, as I think Ryan Van Duzer and myself and some other guys I know, to model this stuff for other men and boys, almost most importantly, who are growing up, realizing that you don't have to pretend to be tough. I interviewed Liz Plank years ago tagged her. She hasn't replied. But uh, she wrote a book all about this, For the Love of Men, which is worth checking out. Um, how to raise sort of or, or create a culture for wholesome manhood that isn't based on these sort of brittle, uh, fake tough, being a jerk, being aggressive kind of stuff. Um, these cliches. We can do better than that. And we are better than that. True manliness, I, you know, if you can even use such a term, should be expressed probably in protecting others, in kindness, in nurturing, in, I mean, that's genuine strength. It's much harder to create than it is to destroy. And that's how I was brought up by my mom. And, you know, I had many wonderful male role models growing up. My mom did a great job making sure that happened. So I called Ryan after I got all these insulting messages from this friend and I really tried to, and he's a Buddhist friend, by the way, and I really tried to kind of dialogue with him and he wasn't having it. He was in full, like, being a jerk mode and laughing at me mode. And I didn't find it that upsetting, you know. It was sad and it was sort of shocking coming from him, but I did unfriend him and he kept at it. I could block him, but, you know, I don't need to get into the drama. But, yeah, I don't need to be uh, Facebook friends with someone who is, you know, literally making fun of someone publicly when they're sharing hard stuff. And yeah, I have gone through some hard stuff. Many of us have. Many of us have gone through much more. I lost my old dog three and a half months of painful shaking before until he died from a minor surgery. My fiance and I split up. I'm 48, really want children. So these are like major things. My mom's health, pandemic, laying off 20 amazing people at Elephant in one year. You know, it's a long list. I have injuries that have made it so I can't, like, uh, climb and, you know, bike without pain. 
uh, for a year. So yeah, it was a lot of loss. Uh, I'm sure that, oh, one of my, my best friend, uh, I hate to use this term because it sounds so trendy, but ghosted me. You know, what a year, all in one year, essentially. So I have a right, you have a right to share yourself. My friend Caitlin Rose Kenny also shared like a vulnerable thing today. And I thought you can do it cleanly. When you're vulnerable, you want to share something uncomfortable, awkward, sad. You can share it cleanly, meaning you don't have to add to it. You don't have to get into Bravo drama style. You don't have to make yourself a big deal out of it. Um, but, you know, there's this old quote by Marianne Williamson that I really appreciated when I was growing up in the Buddhist community because the Buddhist community, for all its wonderful things, would tell you to kind of shut up and go meditate. That was often a kind of response, especially if you were a kid. And I have a problem. I have a problem with this. I have a problem with that. Shut up and go meditate. Basically, was the message often. So Marianne Williamson had this long quote. I wrote about it on Elephant so you can search there. But it was basically saying, being small does no one a favor. Just be yourself, be your own, you know, shine on your crazy diamond. Just um, be brilliant, be lovely, be loud, be dorky. You know, that's who we are. That's what spring is all about. Flowers are coming out just being their silly selves. And you don't make fun of flowers. I mean, I guess these like insecure manly men do, but um, you know, you don't make fun of a dorky puppy. My puppy's right over here. Having a toasty nap. It's a bit hot and muggy out with all the smoke. And you know, to end this entire diatribe, like climate crisis is built on exploitation, right? On aggression, on, on essentially raping and suppressing this earth and one another. So this is an important subject and I and Ryan and many others are happy to model vulnerability and openness, good or bad. Again, this doesn't have to be all like playing our little violin. Like this can be, um, as we know, sadness and, and uh, you know, the harder emotions, uh, making friends with those, Maitri, the Buddhist practice of Maitri, loving kindness, making friends with all of ourselves, the parts of ourselves we're overly proud of, the parts of ourselves we're embarrassed of. That leads also to true joy and true connection, true love. So if I want to have a chance of meeting a partner, gosh knows, I need to be honest about wherever I'm at. Yeah, Thrive, DM me. I'd love to maybe uh, interview you or your husband. That sounds great. And I'm doing the, a couple on my account. Normally I do them on Elephant. It's bigger, but whatever. Hope you enjoy them.